eternal Father. For the sake of the death and resurrection of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, Glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want to get us started with two questions. Um, number one, God was pleased with Solomon for asking for one thing and not the other. So let me ask you. If Solomon had asked for those things he did not ask for, for which God was pleased, would God have given them to him? If Solomon did not ask for the things he didn't ask for, if he had asked for those things he didn't ask for, instead of the one he asked for, do you think would God have given, uh, um, given him what those things in, uh, in place of this one he asked for? Yes or no? Yes. Eh? Yes. Everybody yes? yes? Some people know? Well, I think God would have given because God gave me a blank check. God said, ask for anything. God would have given him. The question would have been, what would have happened to him if he had asked for just the other one? So, God said, Solomon, wow, you did not ask for wealth you did not ask for long life and prosperity you did not ask for victory over your enemy notice that these are the things all of us ask for maybe all of you accept me these are the things we usually ask for all those things we ask for god was pleased with solomon for not asking them and god said because he didn't ask for this but you asked for something else i'm not going to give you that thing you asked for in addition to this one and he got it all Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be what? Added unto you. When you read 1 Kings chapter 4 or chapter 5, if you are using New Jerusalem Bible in chapter 5, if you are using another Bible, I think in chapter 4, you will hear how the Bible describes Solomon in those two major things. So let's use wisdom and wealth, right? Solomon was blessed by God. For asking for wisdom, God and I gave him wealth. If you see the way the Bible describes him, how he was wise above every other person. First Kings 4, we say, people from all over the world came to listen to Solomon's wisdom. And kings, we send gifts to him. So Solomon had wisdom, he had wealth. First Kings chapter 10, we describe his wealth. Describe what comes to Solomon yearly. You will marvel. The, 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 the talents of gold, the, 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 the weight of gold, precious things that came to Solomon yearly, coming from all over the world. The guy was so wealthy that he was wealthier than any other person who has lived, according to this uh, section. So he was the Jeff Bezos, the Elon Musk, the Dan Gote, who are all of them? All of those rich people of, of our time. Solomon was all of them combined. In fact, Solomon was so wealthy that the wealthiest in his time were still envying him. He was so wise that the wisest of those times were still coming to him to ask for wisdom. Solomon was so famous that the famous of the time was coming up to him. Solomon was the president of Presidents. If Solomon were a woman, we say he was so beautiful that the most beautiful gushed at his beauty. When Deuteronomy 28 says you shall be the first and not the last, you shall be at the top and not at the bottom. Solomon personified that. That was Solomon in excess. He was everything you could ever imagine to be. The dude 
was larger than life. He was larger than life in everything. Second question. If God appears to you now and asks you to ask between wealth and wisdom, and anyone you ask, you give you. Let's say God comes with a cup containing mystical water that once you drink it, you become wise. And then it comes with a check of one trillion naira. And it tells you to choose one. Which one will you choose? Which one will you take? The way he came to Solomon, he will ask you, choose one. Which one will you take? Why people I know if you're talking. Which one are you going to take? You drink the water of wisdom, you become wise. Which are, okay, those who will take um, the water of wisdom, let me see your hands. Those who will choose wisdom. Those who will choose wisdom. All right, okay. Those who will take the check. Still not few. So some of you, you must choose one now. Which one will be your own? So I wouldn't have to choose anyone. Once again, those who will drink the water of wisdom, let me see your hand. Okay, those who will take the check. Ha. First and foremost, those of you who are raising your hand for check, all of you are thieves in the ocean. In the ocean. But you are better than those who don't know which one to take. Those who didn't raise their hand. What are you ask, are scared of? God say choose anything. For me, let me tell you my church mind. I will take the check. I already have wisdom now. Everybody should take what he does not have. Uh, those who don't have wisdom, drink the water of wisdom. I already have wisdom, so I will just take. I will take this check. Now. The truth is, every one of us here, you will choose according to Matthew 6, 21. That is what will influence what you take, whether you admit it or not. Everybody will choose according to Matthew 6, 21. What does he say? Matthew 6, 21 says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So you may say you will choose wisdom, but God sees your heart and knows that you crave wealth. Your heartbeat, my heartbeat is louder before God than what my mouth says. When Solomon chose wisdom, that was where his heart was. Every of us here, we choose according to our heart. So we may say one thing, but God knows what we mean. So somebody may ask for wisdom, and, and then his heartbeat is what? Wealth. And he may not get it. Because remember, the Bible says God does not see according to human beings. He sees what? According to the heart. So it's what your heart craves that you are going to answer. And Solomon pleased God because his heartbeat was the people. His heartbeat was how as a king to make the life of his people better. That's what pleased God. That was his heartbeat. Where your treasure? So Solomon's treasure was in the people, not on himself. Not on the pomp and pageantry of kingship. It was the welfare of the people. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the topic of our short reflection by the grace of God, if it's going to be a short reflection, treasures and trashes. Can I hear you say that? Can I hear you say that? And, and the sum of everything I want to say to you this morning is that don't treasure your trashes and trash your treasure. Don't what? Treasure your trashes and trash your treasures. So let's preach that sermon to each other. Turn to somebody by your left or your right and say, Don't treasure trashes and trash treasures. Turn to somebody say that. I think it's as simple as that. And your treasure, if it aligns with the will of God and the purpose of God, that's real treasure. I mean, he had a blank check. He could have asked for long life and prospect, victory over his enemies. Die by fire by those who are against this thing. No, he rather asked for. In other words, he looked beyond himself unto others. That was, a, that was treasure before God. So let's use wisdom and wealth as, um, as, a, as a collective term for each of this and all of that. So the next thing is going to be, what is the difference between wisdom and wealth? What is the difference between wisdom and wealth? And the simple thing I will tell you is this. 
wisdom and where they are all both gifts of God, right? And both of them are treasures. But the difference between them is that wisdom is that gift that connects the receiver to the giver. Wisdom is the gift of God that contains the giver. That is God himself. With wisdom you have God. Because if you read 1 Corinthians, or if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, yes, wisdom is mentioned as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You remember? Wisdom, understanding, all of that. Knowledge, all of them fall under that broad spectrum. Then, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 24 calls Jesus Christ the wisdom and the power of God. So, wisdom is the gift that connects the giver, God, and the world receiver. But what? Is a gift of God that has a notorious reputation, proclivity, tendency to separate the receiver from the giver. And that's why you can see many wealthy people, they are usually sometimes godless people. And that's why Jesus said, it will be hard for a rich man to do what? To enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because riches have a way of what? Separating people from God. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. So with wisdom, wealth becomes a treasure that pleases God. But without wisdom, wealth becomes trash. Because it will separate you from your creator. And if I with wisdom, you can even turn trashes into wealth. Matter of fact, if you read that first King chapter 4, what attracted people to Solomon was not his wealth, it was his what? His wisdom. And as they were coming to listen to his wisdom, they were now coming with wealth. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So wisdom is that give that treasure that connects the giver and the receiver together. And with it, and all you need to know is even the life of Solomon, you will see a manifestation of those two in his life. Through Solomon, you will see a manifestation of those two things in his life. You know, so without wisdom, you will treasure trashes and you will trash treasures. Without wisdom, you will treasure trashes and you will trash treasures. So, you can even see that in the life of Solomon. Um, wh when you're operating without wisdom, your life is going to be different from God. See Solomon when he was operating with wisdom. His life with wisdom is described in 1 Kings up to, chapter up to chapter 10. Read it there. When he was operating in wisdom, and here wisdom also includes godliness, spiritual virtues. All of that okay so when i use words words will just be uh, you know uh, mundane uh, riches and all of that worldliness and all of that when solomon was operating with wisdom check his life he was close to god he built temple for god he ruled the people well he gave judgment wisely and justly and people were coming all over to see him and consult with him and have their problems solved and all that he was contented he was satisfied he was happy there was happiness in his life there was joy there was peace that was when he was operating with wisdom then i don't know what happened solomon switched to wealth he fell into the trappings of wealth what happened read first kings from the chapter 11 the bible describes Solomon. and said solomon now started marrying plenty wives mm -hmm. that's the way one woman no do two no go do three no go do four no go do five no go do ask any womanizer they will tell you Th but that is true womanizer or manizers too not the only men they womanize you. women also manize so for womanizers and manizers one if one is not enough two will not be enough three will not be enough so 10 women were not enough for solomon 20 were not enough 100 were not enough 200 were not enough until he reached how many 
700. Even with that 700, it will still not enough. He had to cheat on them with 300 side chicks. They were not enough. This is his life when he now started operating by worldliness. Nothing was enough. Fame was not enough anymore. And one of the consequences that those women took his heart away from God, First King chapter 11 says, God was angry with Solomon because his heart was no longer with God. I told you, Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. When God was his treasure, his heart was in God. Now his treasure is no longer God. He's in wealth and uh, pleasure. See where his heart has gone. Solomon lost it. He started building temples for idol worship. Because of those women in mind, some of them came from very pagan countries. He became a different person. There was no longer peace. Because of that, the consequence of that was that even God said that God now had to divide the kingdom of Israel. Because of Solomon's action, there was now disunity. Biafra. Odudua. And maybe Arewa. All of these things are the fault of bad leadership. It's the fault of bad leadership. In fact, God wanted to remove kingship completely from that family. But God remembered. Who did he remember? David, Psalm 89 said, I have found a leader after my own heart, David, and with my whole hand have anointed him king. And I have sworn to David, I swore to David, I will never take the kingship away from him. Even if his children misbehave, I will still flog them, but I remember David. What Solomon did was more grievous than what Saul did. It was sufficient for God to take away the kingship from David's children lineage but god remember the oath he swore to david he divided israel as a nation was comprised of 12 tribes god divided them into two ten went to israel with samaria as the capital and two went to um judah with jerusalem as the capital it was because of david that god left two. so in israel anybody can become king but in judah only the children of David. Solomon. He switched over. He became worldly. The gifts have separated him from the giver. He's now having his craving for more. He's eating more. But there is no satisfaction. And the same Solomon gave us a test before he died. You see the problem with wealth. When you have wisdom, your end will be well. With wealth, the end will be disastrous. Wealth without wisdom is a disaster. Disaster waiting to happen. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, it says, better the end of a thing than its beginning. The difference between Solomon and David is that David ended well. He had disasters along the way, but he ended well. He died peacefully, happily, an old man. But Solomon... He ended disastrously. But before he died, he even wrote a testament of his life to tell us his two kinds of life when these things were operating. That's why when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, it was written by Solomon. What is the famous thing you hear from there? Vanity upon vanity. All of them is what? Vanity. That is Solomon telling for those of you who are greedy for power, I have seen it. For those of you who have unquenchable thirst for pleasure, I have seen it. Is it wine? Is it beautiful women? Is it uh, affluence? It is fame. All these things you are killing yourself. You say, I have seen it. I had it in quantum. Much more than anybody can imagine. But where did they get me to? He said, they took me nowhere. They never left me satisfied. They never left me happy. So I don't know why you are killing yourself. Vanity upon vanity. All is what? Vanity. Praise God. When wisdom left him, or when he left wisdom, treasures became trash. They trashed his life. But when he was with wisdom, he was a happy person. One woman was enough. Or those days, kings were allowed to marry, even up to four or five. They were enough. But when wisdom left him, they were not. They became trash. 
Praise God. Praise God. Help me turn to your neighbor. Don't treasure your trash. Don't trash your treasure. When the people of God were Solomon's treasure, it pleased the heart of God because the only way you can tell God you love him, the Bible says, how can you tell me you love God whom you do not see, but you do not love your brother or your sister? The people were his treasure. That's where his heart was. He found peace. He found fulfillment. They said you can never be happy in this life if you concentrate on pursuing happiness for yourself. It is a scientifically proven fact. It's not just religious jargon. You can't be happy and fulfilled if all you are chasing in this life is for yourself. Never. It can never happen. That, why do you think Nigerian politicians are cursed? Part of the cause is not that they will go to hell. Yes, they will go to hell. We have already finished that judgment. <laughs> Part of the cause is that they are never satisfied. They can never be satisfied. And anybody, be they priests or pastors, if your motivation and material things for yourself you want to have material riches and all that you can never be satisfied it's not possible. it's one of the causes of trashing treasures and treasuring trashes it's one of the causes you can be whatever you want you can have whatever you want pursue whatever you want to be there's no problem i pray that you will you know, so if I like Solomon, I pray that God will make your life to be at the top in the name of Jesus Christ. And I earnestly desire that. I pray that you'll be the first among the least in the name of Jesus. You can pursue whatever you want, but let it never be at the expense of what? Treasure. Don't trash people. Don't trash. When you pursue what at the expense of fellow human beings, you are pursuing trash. You are trashing people to get a treasure that will be a trash in your life. So I don't understand it when people who steal and dupe others get angry when ministers dare to condemn it. Yahoo. That Yahoo means a set of people who will just lock themselves up in the house through their computer, look for somebody who is vulnerable, and you dupe the person of everything he labored for. And now this person becomes so broke after 30, 40 years of laboring. You steal everything the person has and the person is dying of depression. The person is dying of a hypertension, heart attack. And you are comfortable. Something tells you that this is the way to go. And as some musicians sing to endorse that kind of lifestyle means for you that it is normal. And you think that God will close his eyes and you, you will end well. It's not possible. Though. If Yahoo means tricking people, defrauding them of their hard-earned money, leaving them penniless or nothing, and they die of and all of these things, how do you want to end well? And Yahoo is not enough. People add a plus to it. From plus to more, people will add times or multiplication. Because you must advance in evil. And as some people consider it a legitimate, they call it legitimate hustle. How can stealing be a legitimate hustle? If you are that kind of person, you can't end well. See, don't marry. Oh. Don't marry. If you're a young man or a young girl, you're involved in that kind of life. Don't marry because this one, the, God does not cause any generation. Generational cause is not coming from God anymore. Ezekiel 18 has showed us that. But there's something called consequences of action. You do people like that, they are I'm not going to marry. Maybe probably you are doing Thanksgiving in churches or so you see. You think that would be enough? I beg, don't marry. If you don't want to return the money, eat it alone and die alone and go to hell alone. Because if you marry and give birth to children, your children will suffer the consequences. Huh? At least if you even want to be a Yahoo, target politicians who are stealing money. But you will not target bad people. It is people who worked honestly. At least target the bad politicians so that on that day you and God may even have a conversation. You say, what did you do? You say, God, but check the guy and I check him. He must. <laughs> Praise God. There is nothing good about it. You are trashing people to win treasure that will become trash. Any 
anything that trashes people. No, no. Solomon's heart was in the right place. When he was, it was all, all the people. He wanted to rule well. He said, God, I'm not asking for anything. You have already made me a king. Meaning that Solomon is saying, if be the king cannot make me happy, is he more fame? Is he more wealth? So what I want is, let me rule these people well. This, the people were his treasure. And that made God happy. When we get a politician in Nigeria, we say, Lord, let me just rule these people well. I don't care about anything. Nigeria cannot be the same. Don't trash your treasure. And then treasure your trash. And it's basically about people. It's basically about people. Without wisdom, wealth becomes trash. See the second reading. Solomon asked, pray according to God's will. Your treasure, your most important treasure is anything you have and you are using it in accordance with the will of God. Second reading. He said, for those who love God, all things you do what? Brethren, we know that in everything God works for good with those who love him. Well, according to this purpose, we usually sing this uh, part of the reading in song. I can see everything turning around, everything turning around, everything turning around for my... Everybody sings that song, but that song is not for everybody. <laughs> God turns things around and says, for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. That means those who live according to the purpose of God. So everything will not turn around for you if you are not working according to the purpose of God. Why do you want to be governor? Why do you want to be president? Why do you want to be chancellor? Why do you want to be parish priest? If it is not the will of God, the purpose of God, of ministering to the people, forget it. Everything cannot turn around. In fact, everything will turn around for your bad. Eventually. So, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, let's not waste too much time. Don't treasure your trash. And don't trash your treasure. Husband, your wife is your treasure. Don't trash her because of a side chick or your side chicks. It is bad enough that you're cheating on your spouse. But it's because of the person you are using to cheat your spouse. You are not now neglecting your spouse. You are earning 250000 at the end of the month, you will budget only 30000 for your wife and children. Then you and your side chicks will now go and spend 220000 Your wife is neglected. Basic needs are not met. Do you know what God will judge? It's not even in your, infid your infidelity. It is your wickedness. You are cheating senselessly. That is you trashing your treasure and treasuring your trash. Because if perchance tomorrow, some, let's say you force, I'm not praying you fall sick, I'm only praying you should change. If perchance you fall sick tomorrow, now big sickness that will get you bedridden, and that money is not happening again, what will happen to those side chicks? They're not going to go. Then you will not be stretched and brought into the house. Who will not be taking care of you every day? It's not your wife, your kids. Don't treasure your trash. And trash your treasure. The same thing, wives, your husband is your treasure. Don't trash him before your people. Don't trash him before your mother, before your father, before your brothers and sisters. Even if your family is richer than his family, your father is richer than your husband. Don't trash your husband. Don't trash your husband. If all, th all things being equal, if all things go as we plan, your father should die before your husband. Abi? Yes. And because ordinarily your father is older than your husband. Have you not only married on a father meets? <laughs> our prayer is that our parents should die before us at old age, Abby. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's your husband you are left to live with. Why are you trashing him? Don't trash your relationships. Don't trash people. Don't trash family. Family is treasure. Don't trash the community of God, children, the church. Don't. Don't. This is God's kingdom on earth, visible. Praise God. 
that takes us to the gospel jesus says the kingdom of god is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man finds he buries it back first and foremost jesus is saying if you don't see the kingdom of god as a treasure you can never possess it because a treasure is something you are willing to sacrifice every thing for if you do not regard the kingdom as a treasure you will never be passionate in pursuing it you will not get it so first and foremost is that we must do what regard the kingdom as a treasure and approach it with the urgency and the exigency that it demands then secondly there are treasures you cannot have until you buy the field the kingdom of god has some treasures you can't have it until you buy the entire field that's what gives you legitimacy which also means there are treasures we are looking for we cannot have them because we are neglecting the space the field that what that contains them romans 14 17 the kingdom of god is not eating and drinking but righteousness peace and joy in the holy for some of us here your biggest need is peace you don't know you are restless all the time you say you are a, a christ follower but you don't have peace meanwhile what jesus says say, peace i give to you not as every other person. you have everything you find you get you wear ankles uh, i mean trinkets even wear leg chain you wear uh, expensive clothes designer clothes designer hair you have money you have but you don't have peace you are never at peace why because you've not possessed the kingdom buy the kingdom and these things will come to you buy the kingdom and this is there are some things you cannot get separately you have to get them in what by acquiring this the whole thing i don't want to go into too much details let's leave that so approach the kingdom as what as 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 a treasure so teach your heart you know our hearts can be stupid dumb our hearts can actually treasure trashes and trash treasures so Jesus did not say, he said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. So what your heart perceives as treasure, that's what it's going to be. That's why you must use your mind and teach your heart what the treasure is. So you go for the right treasure. Imagine you as a father, you sent your daughter, trained her in the best school, either in Nigeria or abroad. Pretty girl and she comes back with her academic qualification only for her to fall in love with a drug addict. It has happened. Intelligent, pretty girl with good family background ends up in the hand of an arm robber. And sometimes, no matter what she tells her, yeah, daddy, I'm in love with him. Love boogie there. <laughs> she is, her heart has what? For some reason, falling for the wrong thing. And now her future will be mortgaged. I don't want to use, there is a popular musician i don't know whether it is it's not right to use but she died before her time out of what addiction to drug and what happened because of the person she was dating i will not call her name but they don't consume me i know kukuma get money praise god you must teach your heart we must teach our hearts to know what the treasures are the heart is you know anyhow and yet that is the seat of all that's why we must teach our hearts through your mind romans will transform your life by the renewing of your mind you must be taught that's what jesus did when jesus came jesus was teaching christians the real treasures of god not what people thought before before jesus came everybody thought that having wealth is the blessing <laughs> jesus came and scattered you say blessed are the poor for this is the kingdom of god Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So treasure the kingdom. Secondly, finally, he says, the kingdom of God is like a man looking for fine pearl when he found one of greater value. So some treasures are better than others. So don't treasure trashes and don't trash treasure. Your health is a treasure. Prefer your health above your appetites above your cravings prefer your health there are some things we crave they are not good for our health we have to choose our health over the things we crave that's why some i don't understand certain things your appetite is even is like your heart too okay i can understand for people who drink alcohol if you drink beer 
at least beer contains some nutrients, true or false? Beer is made from grain now, so it must have some nutrients. Eh? Uh -huh, at least your body can get at least some vitamins and all of that. But what I don't understand is smoke. Which vitamin smoke content? <laughs> and some of you are smoking to the point that you are killing your lung. Why do you not see the part where it is said federal government of Ministry of Health warns that smokers are liable to die? Some people, when they read that, in, they see that Federal Minister of Health warns that smokers are liable to be young until they die. And it's the same, you know, if you are driving and a car is smoking everywhere, you be complaining, hey, who? what did this man drive? Come on, go and repair your car. Why are you not sniffing that smoke? What's the difference between that one you go and hide and sniff? Why do you want to kill your liver with too much intake of alcohol? I think I've said this before. Why don't you drink in such a way that if you are going to live for 80 years, drink one, one bottle for the next 80 years. Why do you want to drink 50 bottles? and then reduce your life for 40 years. Treasure your health, my brother and my sister. Don't treasure your appetite over your health. Treasure peace. Treasure soundness of mind over certain things. So I pray for you as I pray for myself. May the Lord give us the heart that descends treasures and trashes in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we never treasure our trashes and trash our treasures in the name of Jesus. Amen. And like Solomon, I pray, may God grant you treasures that will keep you close to him. So that see the end of your life, as you enjoy those treasures, you will not miss life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, he For the sake of his sorrowful passion, he